Hey, hey, everyone at Sleepy Reader. I'm on a little hike on Powell Butte, inspired by my good buddy Sam, who's always doing his nature walks. So we're taking in the nature here. Things are looking pretty good. Not too hot yet. Hey, hey, everyone. It is I, Sleepy Reader, AKA Damien. This is uh, one of my old fashioned comic book hauls, meaning nothing special to see here. No keys, no grails, no minty goodness, just stuff I like to collect, which is uh, runs of fun comics to read. I haven't done a haul in a long time. I have been hauling lots of comics and I haven't been showing them and I actually start making a huge pile of comics that I wanted to do in haul videos because I get extra pleasure out of getting the comics when I do these haul videos and maybe even watch them back myself someday to see what I got. First of all though, I got a uh, act of kindness from Sam of Sam's Tangled Web. Um, you may have seen on his channel or a little bit of a clip here. Uh, that the two of us went for a hike together last week. Remember, I can't remember what day it was, maybe Tuesday or Monday. And he brought me some comics. Some we, He'd been talking for a long time about that he had some spare ROMs to give me because he knew that I, like him, was trying to collect a, a run of ROMs, but I was behind him. I got to start later than him or hadn't focused like laser hard on getting those ROMs, but now I really am, so it, it came at just the right time. He got me, um, let's start in order, ROM number 27 with this great cover with Galactus on it. And then, apparently the hard, perhaps one of the hardest to get ROMs, ROM number 31, which is apparently um, Rogue's second appearance. <laughs> so I guess that's my hot comic of this haul, as far as I know. <laughs> This, all of these have great John Buscema art inside. And uh, this one is inked by uh, Joe Sinnott. Can't really get better than that. The, Joe Sinnott gave us the look of Marvel Comics in the uh, 60s and 70s, particularly in the 70s where he kind of spread out and uh, you'd, you'd find him in all kinds of places rather than just on the Fantastic Four. So anyway, this looks really cool, and I guess there's a lot of X-Men business going on here. So I look forward to, to reading that. But I'm, I'm getting enough ROMs that I may be able to read them all in order. So number 31, that'll kind of come later when I get to it. And then he gave me number 38, which uh, has one of my favorite characters, the Master of Kung Fu, the classic Master of Kung Fu, Shang-Chi. And I believe this cover is by Gene Day, yes. Uh, who is, well, one of the three great artists who did Master of Kung Fu. And sometimes, I mean, I go back and forth, but lately he's been one of my favorite artists of the, of the early 80s, I guess, or late 70s, whenever it was. But the interiors is still Sal Buscema, but with different inkers, Aiken and Garvey, who give it a whole different look, a very cool look. So I was... Really grateful to, to Sam for this. This is a beautiful comic on the inside. And you know what? I mean, I love covers, but it's the insides of the comic that really count. That's what makes comics great. All the little panels with the little pictures and the words. The words and the pictures, that's comics. So, yeah, fantastic stuff. Rom the Space Knight number 38. So... In the meantime, I'd been going crazy buying ROMs up when they were, you know, inexpensive, which they almost always are, at a bunch of different comic book shops. Um, and Matt and I on, um, I can't even remember the name of my own podcast, <laughs> on Never Stay Dead, had said our next podcast would be about ROMs issues 1 through 10. Maybe that'll end up being issues 1 through 5 once we already read it. We'll have to see. But so I've been trying to get at least 1 through 10, and it's certain issues, particularly issue 7. Issue 7 has eluded me, so I still do not have a issue 7. But in the meanwhile, while looking for issue 7, and I think it was issue 3 or one other of the 1 through 10 ones, I ended up buying a whole lot of other ROMs. So uh, here's issue 3. I did find that. Um, 
and that's that's a uh, Frank Miller cover, believe it or not. Frank Miller drawing Rom, with uh, Terry Austin doing the inks. Miller and Austin, that's kind of an unusual combination. Here's a really beat up copy of Rom number four. I must have found it without a plastic back. Um, let's see, so that's easy to open up. It's Sal Buscema doing his own inks. So that's what, Sal's own inks by this time were already getting a little rough and his inks got even rougher. He liked that rough style. Whereas he had a very smooth style when he got his start inking over his brother and other people like that. So yeah, kind of the more minimalistic Sal inks on here, but that's still good. It's the Sal Buscema storytelling that I love so much and the, his uh, ability to make fights exciting all the time. So that's number four, and then I have num number five I also picked up. And the house that haunted space nights. Wow, a house that multiple space nights were haunted in this house. And that is a Milgram cover. I'm not a super... F Milgram and Hannigan did a lot of covers during this period, and neither of them were artists that I was wild about, but maybe they were good at the basic layouts of covers. Um, who's, I can't find a signature for this one. And I really can't, it's not a very good cover. I can't quite guess who did this cover, but it is ROM number six. It's Spidey right there, so that's uh, direct market. <laughs> I guess you're cooler if you, now you're cooler if you have the newsstand. It used to feel like back in the day, it was much cooler to get it from the direct market than with the stupid uh, computer barcode on the cover. Much rather have the face of Spidey right there. This is ROM number eight. Looks like he's fighting ghosts. <laughs> and RIP ROM. And is there a signature? I I love knowing who did these covers, um, but it's sometimes mysterious. No signature there. I ultimately will look all these, who did all these covers up on um, Mike's amazing comic website. That's where I go. This looks like a Michael Golden cover to me, if I'm not wrong. Um, oh man, I remember hating these uh, Toys R Us and other contests they had at the top here. Those always annoyed me, just because I guess it just didn't fit in with the rest of the cover. I mean, I'm not against them having contests or promotions or what have you, but. And I don't, I don't know if they all had this diamond thing here. I always disliked that diamond, but I don't know if that means it went through another distribution thing, another distribution avenue. And here's number 10, which also has that diamond and another contest at the top. This Marvel comic could be worth $2,500 to your details inside. $2,500 was a lot of money back then. That actually is a cover that I like quite a bit, maybe more for the, the way it's colored. Um, and that's a signature there, but I guess, is that a G for Golden? Is that Michael Golden again? Was there a G on the last cover? I don't see one on this cover. Anyway, ROM 10, ROM 12, with uh, Bill Manilow. I think Bill Manilow was the scripter on ROM maybe the whole way through, I'm not sure. Um, but one of Bill Manilow's favorite of his own creations, Jack of Hearts. I wonder who drew this one. It'd be interesting to see Sal Buscema drawing. And it also has that G or whatever it is, that little signature there. I don't know if that's really a G. That's why I'm imagining it's a G. Um, on the inside, Sal Buscema inking himself. Um, Mary Jo Duffy, or Joe Duffy as the editor. I forgot she worked as an editor. I remember her as a writer. So anyway, that'll be fun to see, and it will add to my, to the tapestry of appearances of um, Jack of Hearts. I've been noticing wherever Jack of Hearts shows up now since I did a little video with my friend Eric, where we discussed the four-issue miniseries of Jack of Hearts by Bill Manilow. Better speed it up here. I got a lot of ROM to go. ROM 13. With all the other Space Knights, that's kind of a cool cover. I hope I enjoy reading these ROMs. I remember liking them back in the 80s. I think for a couple of years I was picking them up, and then, you know, life took over, and I didn't get all the ROMs. And, of course, I don't have, didn't have any of them 
uh, when I got back into comics. Uh, Saga of the Space Knights. This cover I kind of like and dislike. Uh, number 21, which uh, where they experimented and put the logo inside this word balloon. Move over, Rom. There's a new hero in town. I think I like the concept of doing a cover like this, but I do not like the colors. And I especially do not like this gradient fade in the background. But none of the colors, like the color on Rom and the orange and the blues, I do not like that. But I am kind of excited to see what they did with this hero, Torpedo. Well, I only remember from an issue or two of Daredevil, written by Marv Wolfman. Um, number 22, uh, that was 21, so the next issue of that is, I would guess, yep, Al Milgram. There's just something kind of too loose and sloppy about Milgram. He's not on point, which is funny because when he was an inker over someone like uh, Jim Starlin, he was really tight, but once he became a penciler, it seemed like he, he became kind of loose in a way. And some loose art I really like, but something about Al Milgram's loose art. Another Milgram cover... Again, look, especially like the the shading on things and the faces and everything, it just feels too loose. It feels like it needs it needs like some Joe Sinna tightening it up. To storm the Baxter building. I wonder if this is during the period where, there was a short period where Power Man and Iron Fist, their team up comic was really popular. It was uh, written by Joe Duffy and usually drawn by Carrie Gamble. I remember really liking that comic at that time and maybe and then you were seeing Power Man and Iron Fist as guest stars in a lot of other comics, I guess, to help the sales of those comics. This is Sal Buscema and Joe Sinnott doing the finishes, so it's going to be a very smooth, slick visual experience. Um, yeah, it looks nice. But that's not all. A lot more ROM to come here. Eventually there'll be some other stuff besides ROM, but this is a ROM-heavy haul. Hey, there's an ant crawling on my iPad. Uh, ROM number 24, back with the win something banners at the top. Ooh, and from the newsstand. I mean, come on, from the, from the direct comic book store, that's much cooler. And this is Al Milgram, but I actually like this cover. Maybe just, I like the composition with this huge pile of uh, scrolls attacking. <laughs> um, and I like the colors here. Nice color combinations. We've got ROM 25, another banner at the top, but man, they went crazy with those. Another cover that I don't like that much. It's Al Milgram again. It's funny with all this fantastic Sal Buscema art, why did they not have Sal do the covers? For some reason, they loved having Al Milgram do covers. He did a lot of covers during this period. Um, and another Milgram cover, not quite as bad. Um, it's a pretty good cover, except that I'm now I'm looking for the bad in Al Milgram. As I can think about. This is a pretty cool cover, number 28, still with Torpedo, apparently a female Space Knight 2. I, I don't recall her at the moment, um, but that looks like a cool issue. Number 29, again with the very rough cover art. Down in the Mines. That's that's not a great way to sell a comic book, really. Um, and this creature seems very indistinct and undetailed. But anyway, uh, two dollars I think for that. Unless I got a discount on it, I'm not sure where I bought these. <clears throat> this one's this cover's got a cool number thirty. Rom being attacked by giant spiders. You know this one. Some of these I've already opened, and so they already removed the tape. Because I never put tape on tape on bags in my own collection, <clears throat> if I can avoid it. So I've had a few accidents. So is it still Sal? Looks like Sal. Yep, with Joe in it. This is going to be really good stuff, at least visually. Well, that guy's not having a good day. <laughs> I like the. Exp I mean. Sal Buscema characters have a limited number of expressions, but they're very effective expressions, and I, I enjoy them. I think I might have been, at this time, when I was still trying to draw comics a little bit myself, I might have been a bit critical of Sal Buscema and the, 
and the facial expressions that reappeared so much. But, you know, really Jack Kirby and other people did the same thing. Okay. Next one I've got up is Ron number 33, which also has a very evocative cover by Al Milgram, yep, in a very loose style, but it kind of works here. It looks like we're looking at some DC gothic horror comic, uh, House of Mystery or something, but it's not. Rom's not even on the cover, which is pretty bold. Oh, I guess, I guess that's Rom there, kind of symbolically in the background. Again with the gradient here, which is, I don't know, I don't know what I think about that. Number 33. Number 34, we got Namor on the cover with all kinds of crazy sea creatures. And another Namor on number 35. This is Hannigan and Milgram. So Milgram's inking and Hannigan did the, did the artwork, did the pencils. Another one where they go crazy with the gradients. Do I can't see Milgram's signature. Oh, here we go. Uh, this one is Sal Buscema and Al Milgram. So I'm guessing it, it might have been the co colorist, but it might be Al Milgram who puts in these gradients uh, with one of those. I think back then they had those sticky sheets that they would cut out around the figures and lay them down for dots. I mean, I think they could get gradient dots if they wanted. But that's, that's kind of a cool cover, other than those annoying gradient dots. I don't even know if you can see them on the video through the bag. So that's number 36. Oh, interesting. This one got cut wrong right along the top it cut up got cut off too soon here oh a gene day cover i love it number 39 i think the one that uh sam gave me was number 38 so i've got the one right after it number 39. let's see, look inside oh still the same art team i was hoping somehow that gene day would be the inker over sal that would be interesting. Or the penciler. But anyway, uh, this inking team over Sal is really good. This Aiken, Garvey and Aiken. Aiken and Garvey. Don't recall them, and I don't know if they appeared in many other comics, but they seem to do a really good, a really good inking job. Okay, just got a few more Ron to go, and then I'll show you some of the others I've gotten. And then I'll have to come back for some other videos. Got to do more hauls. This is, uh, in part, you might say, my over <laughs> overindulgence during the COVID period. I've been building up a lot that I can show you. Buying comics a lot more than I'm making videos. <clears throat> Number 70. I wonder if this is a Ditko period. The, the cover, though, is by uh, Jackson Geis with inks by Jerry Ordway. Um, not, not a stunning cover, despite those, those guys normally being really cool artists. I think I also just don't like the color combinations there again. Rom is weird, where I like the interiors more than the exteriors. And here, the interiors, you know, I remember not liking, these are by Steve Ditko, inked by Kim DeMulder, whose name I remember, but I can't recall whether I liked or didn't like his art. But that's a good splash page, and, uh... You know, maybe I'll have a different view on the, on the Ditko period in ROM than I did at the time, where I my basic take on it was that I may still end up being that Ditko really didn't care about drawing ROM at all and just did his minimum um, work. I don't think he would ever turn in a bad job, but he would um, perhaps not put as much love into a comic like this. Or he's just drawing about a uh, commercial property, a toy, especially if he didn't have as much um, input on the story. And there's ROM 72, I believe. Oh, no, this is a Cary Gamble cover with Baker. Not bad. Um, Kyle Baker? No, some other Baker maybe? I don't know. Again, I just don't like the colors, basically. I don't know who these characters are. Is that a version of the Hulk? Rick Jones and Brandy Clark. So that's Brandy Clark? That's Rick Jones. Okay, storylines I don't know about. I wasn't, definitely wasn't reading ROM by ROM number 70 back in the day. We got the uh, black Spider Man, the black costume Spider Man in the corner box here. 
And finally, I've got two ROM annuals. One with, uh, amazingly enough, a Bill Sienkiewicz cover. ROM annual from 1984, number three. So I guess that would mean that uh, maybe ROM started in 1981. I'm assuming the art inside is not Bill Sienkiewicz. That would be amazing. No, the, the art inside is by William Johnson, someone I've never heard of, but inked by Aiken and Garvey. Sometimes they would, have, you know, to do an annual and all that work, they'd pull in some artist who, who didn't do a, lot, a regular monthly book so that they would have time to do an annual. I wonder if sometimes it was kind of a tryout, too. This artist seems pretty good. It reminds me a little bit of Mike Klug at a glance. But um, I don't think this person stuck around too long because I don't remember the name. Or maybe he was busy when I was not buying so many Marvel comics. William Johnson. And, whoops, I thought that was the end. There's one more ROM here, out of place. Not in order, ROM number nine. That too looks to me like a Michael Golden cover, at a glance. Beware Serpentine. Kind of a cool cover. Again with the oranges, but other than that, it's not bad. Okay, on to other things. Uh, I couldn't resist, at a low price, any cover by Jack Kirby. I'm kind of... I think I've mentioned before somewhere that I'm hunt, trying to hunt down all of the Jack Kirby uh, Marvel covers that he did after he returned to Marvel in the mid-70s, because um, he did a lot of covers. He also, you know, did interiors on certain books, but he didn't come back to the Avengers or to the Fantastic Four or groups like that, but he did do covers, and this is a, a cool example. His style had changed and maybe become kind of rougher, but there was something about it that I really liked, you know, compared to his um, earlier Marvel days. Um, so I still, I get excited whenever I find one of his covers. But then, as a bonus, this turns out to be one of those early George Perez at Marvel when he was doing the Avengers, uh, with Pablo, Pablo Marcos doing the inking. Pablo Marcos is a very strong inker, almost almost too strong for a lot of pencilers, but over um, over George Perez, I think we got a very exciting combo. And there's something about, you know, I was talking about how I like the interiors, I like the little boxes with the pictures. Something about George Perez and interiors that really is awesome, the, the way he does the little boxes and puts together the pictures in the little boxes and moves things around. I remember noticing that right away about him when he started at Marvel before he went to D, even before he went to DC. Something just very pleasing about his layouts and his panel-to-panel -panel action. But also, of course, his style of drawing is also very pleasing. So this one is a massive uh, floating heads cover. I mean, really going for the floating heads. Let's see, uh, Captain America says, Good Lord, this can't be happening. Wonder Man says, But it is happening, Cap. The Vision, captured by Atuma, says uh, Scarlet Witch. Warlord of Atlantis. And then Iron Man says, And haul before him in chains. Can anyone save my husband before it's too late? Wow. Ah, got this one at Cloud9 Comics. Always get a nice discount there. They're my favorite shop, and I uh, have my pull list there. It's weird saying my favorite shop, though. I love so many of the shops around, but uh, they do great by me on my pull list. So, and then I, uh, also at Cloud9, I picked up some Thing Marvel 2-in-1s. This one with the Black Widow. Um, I hope, it probably won't. Uh, oh! Chris Claremont wrote it. Bob Brown and Claus Jansen doing the art. Um, that'll be interesting to see. Bob Brown moved from Marvel, from DC to Marvel and did some good work and then disappeared. And I found out later that it was because he died very young, which is really too bad. Um, I think he worked on the Avengers for a little while. Maybe it was Steve Englehart. I don't think he's the best artist here at doing the thing, but it still looks like a pretty cool comic. 
And then we got another Marvel 2-in-1 with Power Man. And that's a really ridiculous bad guy creature on the cover with a ridiculous name, Bragadoon. The mountain that walks like a man. It doesn't look much like a mountain to me, more like a snake man. Oh well. Probably a uh, Ron Wilson artwork here. And Roger Siffler and Len Wein on it. That name Roger Siffler rings a bell, but I did he do the Defenders for a while? Where did I read Roger Siffler back in the day? Anyway, that's uh, Ron Wilson is good stuff for the thing. So that'll be nice. It, was, it looks like Vince Coletta inks. That's always bad. Yeah, Vince Coletta inks. You know, Vince Coletta couldn't ruin people like Sal Buscema and Ron Wilson as much as the artists who put in a lot of detail, because then Vince would take the, take the detail out. The Thing Meets the Son of Satan, my namesake, Damien. Um, or Damon, I guess. They're fighting Ravenstorm, who wants their souls. We've got a uh, Marvel team-up featuring Spider-Man and Nightcrawler. Kind of later in the Marvel team-up uh, run, number 89. I don't think I was getting Marvel team-up by this point. I loved Marvel team-up when I was younger. But by the 80s... Uh, this is 1980. I might have felt like I was too old for it. But we got some Rich Buckler art and some Mike Nasser art. Chris Claremont on the script. And they stole from the future, from the spider, famous Spider-Man kiss right there. And this art looks good. Very good. Who's the inker? Joseph Rubenstein. Who's very a very good inker for people who work with that kind of Neil Adams style, I would say. And Marvel Team Up, Spider-Man and the Beast, number 90. That's kind of a cool cover. Who's that character? Almost thought it was Batman for a second. Death Rides the Airwaves. And uh, Mike Vosberg and Bob McCloud on art. Stephen Grant, the writer. I don't have strong memories of liking Stephen Grant scripts. I'm not sure why. Why I didn't like them or, or was them. not so overwhelmed by them. And Marvel, Marvel Team Up Annual, which does not have Spider-Man, or at least not a lot. There's Spider-Man hiding there on the cover. But we get uh, Power Man and Iron Fist, probably again the, that era when they were very popular, teaming up with the Hulk. Wow, I was going to say this looks like a Al Milgram cover, but in fact it's a Frank Miller and John Romita cover. I wonder which John Romita. I guess John Romita Sr.? Doesn't look like his inking style, though. I would have guessed that was Bob McCloud or someone inking there. Oh, Herb Trimp pencils. I, I always like those, even though they sometimes can be very crude. Simple. Looks like we got Machine Man also. Now, this one I remember having back... Back when I got back into comics in college, I remember picking this one up because it had a very obviously Frank Miller cover, a very good one. I think it might be written by Frank Miller on the inside. Am I right or am I wrong? Just for the annuals, they like to have Spider-Man team up with a lot of people. So we got Moon Knight, Iron Fist, Power Man, and Daredevil. And yes, script by Frank Miller, art by Herb Trimpey again. So, um, I know I read this back in the day and really liked it, so I'm really looking forward to giving that a reread. I'll be stopping in a few minutes. I picked up Captain America 152. I, picture frame cover, love those. Uh, Mr. Hyde. Uh, I think the cover is by Sal Buscema, and the interiors will be by him too. This looks like it was, the cover looks like it was inked by uh, Vinnie Coletta. And here's one that I removed from its bag. I ought to find a new bag for it, but it's pretty beat up. It's got a nice John Romita cover, Captain America and the Falcon number 145. And even better, on the inside, it's got Gil Kane artwork inked by John Romita Sr. 
10. It's a fa this is a fantastic comic. I should probably look for one in better shape, given how good it is. Um, definitely a very shield-heavy issue. But I love Gil the Gil Kane, uh, John Romita team on the issues they did on uh, Spider-Man. Beautiful stuff. And it's just as beautiful here, just as wonderful. Also out of the bag, this one should go in a bag soon, but a pretty beat-up copy of Captain America 139. I'm not sure who did that cover at all. Could be John Romita. Inside it is John Romita artwork. I guess Cap is thinking of hanging it up. I think this might have been during the period that he was... Uh, Infiltrating the police? Is this the police commissioner that is giving him his assignment to infiltrate the police? Yeah, there he is. He's joining the police in the police locker room. And before Falcon changed the color of his uh, costume. Okay, that was probably enough for today. Uh, if you stuck with me for a whole 30 minutes, thank you very much. Um, I'll be back soon with probably talking about my new the new stack of comics that I read from last Wednesday, but then doing some more hauls. Talk to you all later. We're not totally lost now, but we're not quite sure where we're going anymore. <laughs> We made it out of the woods. We're back on top of the butte. I don't think we have a whole lot more uphill to deal with. <laughs> the rest of our day is going to be downhill. Well, wait a minute.